Hey guys, have you ever thought about living in one of the most beautiful places in all of Florida? Today we're going to explore the Emerald Coast. We're talking PCB to Destin and every place in between. I'm going to show you all the great places to go. I'm going to show you the things I like about living here, the things I don't like about living here. It's the ultimate pro and con vlog coming up next. If you're going to talk about pros of living anywhere, you got to talk about the seafood here. We are surrounded by some of the best seafood and this is one of the best places to get it. Buddy Seafood Market. Let's check it out. And we are talking good stuff here. It's all fresh and ready to fire up. And the best part about getting your fish at Buddy's, they'll actually steam it for you too. Oh, look at this. You got to try their cocktail sauce, by the way. It's delicious. What's your favorite thing here? Uh, usually, usually the 2125s, 1620 uh, peeled and veins, and then snow crab. And snow crab, there you go. I always get the Royal Reds over here. You could have them steam it. How much does it cost to steam it? Uh, it's an extra two dollars a pound for steam. It. Extra two bucks a pound. You can't beat that. And they'll put some Cajun stuff on it. They got lemon pepper as well. Thank you, sir. All right, Zach, steaming them up. I can't wait to see what Alabama style looks like. my life uh, I have been asked to try one of the Alabama style so let's go ahead and try it oh my gosh this looks so good now guys I told you that the cocktail sauce here is incredible they don't need no cocktail sauce that is pure Alabama deliciousness. Okay, another con to living here on the Emerald Coast is it takes a long time to get anywhere. That's because it's very shallow. Everything here is right along the beach. So most of the places you go to are on the beach. There's a large stretch of beach, 28 miles long that we cover, but you're constantly going up and down. Nothing goes out really. It just goes along the beach. That's why I bought this beast. <laughs> Yes, make fun of me all that you want, but a hybrid vehicle here is a monster. This sucker gets 42 miles per gallon and I love it. In fact, I actually uh, about to trade in my Suburban and get another Prius because, not because I think it's cool, really. My wife won't even be seen in this car, but 42 miles per gallon rocks when you have to drive everywhere all day. And like I said, we're up and down this all the time. Being real estate agents, we're constantly showing people different properties and it's much more affordable if you get one of these guys. I know it doesn't look cool. Maybe you can get the BMW version maybe you could hire me as your realtor and i can get the bmw version of the electric car <laughs> give me one of those big 60 million dollar listings out in Grayton beach i swear i'll trade the prius in right away we'll get into a really nice bmw electric car and uh, i'll be rocking in some style my wife will want to be seen with me again it's just a drawback to living here guys there's a lot of driving involved you're constantly up down the coast uh and the gas here is not cheap the gas here is uh, about 30 cents more expensive than what i experienced in memphis so save yourself some money get yourself a nice hybrid be cool like me the cool kid club hybrid cars it's the only way to go all right guys right behind me we have highway 98 this is the major thoroughfare from panama city all the way to destin huge drawback here it's a con and that is that you get stuck on this thing sometimes and there's nowhere to go this area can get very congested with traffic and not only that it's very dangerous. You're not allowed to drive a golf cart on this road, yet you will sometimes see some tourists do some very stupid stuff and drive golf carts on this road. The locals here call it Bloody 98. That's because a lot of people drive on this road that shouldn't be driving on this road or they don't understand the rules of driving on the road. There's a lot of turns, a lot of places for people to make U-turns and make some serious mistakes that could cost them their lives. So please, when you're driving on 98, use caution. Pay attention to what's going on because it's not necessarily your bad driving that could cause the accident, but there's a lot of people out there that don't know what they're doing and don't care about other people's lives when it comes down to it. With my girls in the car, I have to drive uber cautious all the time. I'm always on high alert because you never know when somebody's going to make a bad decision. Another pro to living on the Emerald Coast is this is a great place to live. This is a great place to raise a family. Everybody lives here because they want to live here. A lot of folks move from out of town into this area. In fact, before 1960, this area was pretty much sparse. There was nobody here. So everybody that's here wants to be here. And the recreation 
educational opportunities for kids and adults alike are absolutely endless. I'm standing in front of Frank Brown Park Playground and this is one of my kids' favorite areas in the city as the uh, park is just absolutely immense. And we have the girls enrolled in T-ball here. It's so fun to go out and watch them play T-ball. The coaches, all volunteer, are top-notch people and really incredible folks. We had a big, huge Easter egg hunt here for Easter and the girls absolutely loved it. There must have been 3,000 kids out here hunting Easter eggs. Uh, the vibe was great. Everybody was very cool and cordial towards each other. This park in particular is absolutely insane. It's huge. It's got ball fields for all age groups, softball, baseball, walking trails, all sorts of stuff for the kids to enjoy. So great place to raise a family, very safe. The focus here is family. They really want families in this area and it's a great place to raise a family. If you're moving to Panama City Beach, you got to check out this park. Another huge con about living on the Emerald Coast and you're not going to be able to get away from this one, guys, is biting flies. Ooh, the crazy big, huge flies that come up here in late summer. If there's a north wind, they'll come from off the bay and they will bite the heck out of you. Even worse than biting flies, we have these things called no see -ums. Biting midges. Look how teeny tiny that thing is. And you can't even see these guys. They come up in swarms. All of a sudden, you realize you leave the beach and you have these red dots all over you and they are terribly itchy. I am myself, I'm a very itchy person and I try not to scratch them when I'm awake, but when I sleep, it's inevitable. I always scratch them, it causes a sore. It's terrible. The biting insects here are real. The best remedy we found for it is this stuff called Swamp Gator. $9.99, you can buy it at Ace Hardware and it really does do a good job of keeping them no CMs off you uh, and the biting flies. They're just so annoying because it's not like regular mosquitoes and of course we have those here too. Uh, you also have to watch out for red ants and there's spiders here. There's lots of wildlife. The good thing about North Florida though, it at least gets cold enough here to kill a lot of it off during the winter. But come around April, all of a sudden you start seeing a lot more bugs. We were just out here at my girl's t-ball game the other night and we got mobbed. Luckily we had a game the night after and I don't know if they came out here and sprayed or what happened but the no CMs were gone and we didn't get attacked but it was so sad because my girls had red spots all over their faces where they got attacked. Not really much you can do if you don't have bug spray. It sucks for you. Another huge bonus about living here on the Emerald Coast is the cost of living compared to other Florida markets. Now if you're moving to South Florida you're gonna find much more expensive places there than you you will here. You have the cooler weather here, which is a drawback to that, but man, the prices here compared to there can't be beat. In fact, there are so many places in Panama City and Panama City Beach that you can find that I believe are a deal right now. You know, the median home price in 38 right now is a million dollars, but over here in Panama City Beach, you can get something very nice. Uh, even if you're looking for an income producing property, uh, some investment property for the $500,000 range. Uh, you know, there are properties that that if you are a first time investor, you're looking to get into the beach market, that is here for you in Panama City Beach too. Also want to point out that Panama City is actually revitalizing their downtown right now. They have an incredible downtown scene. It's got a very good vibe and all of that uh, property over there is being flipped right now. Some real good opportunities to get in under the $300,000 mark. Go ahead and renovate those properties and you know, you probably could see some equity in the next couple years. So this market compared to other markets in Florida, very cheap. If you like for us to send you uh, some cash flow properties or some properties that we think are going to gain some equity in the next couple of years, we'd love to send you a list of those properties. Visit our website at myemeraldcoastbeachhouse.com. All you have to do is go on there, tell us what you're looking for, and we'll automatically just start sending you out houses in that price range. If you have something particular, you can always email me, john at rubyredmedia.com. All right, guys, time for another con, and another con is medical. The medical here hasn't exactly kept up with the speed in which the cities have grown here. We've experienced some exponential growth over the last 10 years, and unfortunately, the uh, the medical's just not there yet. So there's a lack of hospitals here. Uh, there's also a lack of doctors. So if you're going through your insurance to find a doctor, uh, I had to wait 60 days uh, just to get a uh, appointment with the doctor here. Like the first five doctors that I went through insurance uh, said they 
weren't accepting new patients. So keep it in mind, it is, the medical here is a little different. I've already had some acquaintances here that needed some you know, work that uh, was outside of the scope of the hospitals could provide here. And they had to wind up driving to Jacksonville, Florida to have those procedures done. So keep that in mind. The medical here is not that of a big city. If you're moving here from a bigger city, expect some pains when it comes to dealing with medical. That being said, there's minor medical uh, clinics all up and down the coast. You can find those at a lot of places. We just don't have the big hospitals that offer a lot of the big services. Keep it in mind if you're moving to the Emerald Coast. Another huge bonus about living here is all the state parks you can visit. And this happens to be one of my favorites here at Inlet Beach. This is Camp Helen State Park. And it's so cool because it's an honor system here. Uh, basically, it's $4 to park for your whole car. You put your money in there. You take your parking slip. You put it up on your dashboard. Put the money in and booyah! You have parking and a full day of fun. You can't believe all the stuff this place has. It's got fishing, it's got kayaks, it's got a beach, it's got a lake. <laughs> It's got everything you could possibly want for the day. Cottages, we're gonna go explore it. Walking trails, there's so much to do here. And it's literally one of the cutest places on the beach. And as you can see, they have a wonderful little fishing dock down here. You got a couple fishers out there. Look, there's a pelican. Uh, the pelican's always waiting for fish down there. And if you look to the right, there's the kayak center. You look to the left down here, it's a walking trail. You can walk down this trail here and fish underneath the bridge if you want. That's a good place to fish. And this is a lake. This is a dune lake. This is a very special place. The dune lake connects to the ocean out towards the right over here. And we'll take a walk over there. Check that out. Here at Camp Helen State Park, they have these wonderful rocky chairs that you can sit on up here and overlook the lake. Isn't that cute? All right, let's get to the con, and that is what the locals affectionately call Hell Week. Hell Week isn't as bad as it sounds. It's just that uh, us locals uh, here in this area like to over embellish on things sometimes. Hell Week is actually spring break for Atlanta. So when Atlanta gets spring break, everybody here actually calls it Hell Week. Why? Because we get flooded with folks and hey, we love you guys coming down, especially you guys that know how to control yourselves. The guys that don't, not so much. You know, like they say, it only takes one bad apple to run the bunch and that's the case with Hell Week here in Panama City Beach. There you go, police officer patrolling. He don't like Hell Week either. So what is Hell Week? Hell Week is basically when Atlanta goes on spring break. Not only does Atlanta go on spring break, but also anything within a hundred mile radius pretty much goes, which the locals affectionately call that the hundred mile club. So the hundred mile club is mostly, you know, high school students, people that don't have a lot of money that will come down here because it's a quick, easy trip and make a weekend out of it. Uh, for the most part, hundred milers are fine, but there are some of them that like to cause a ruckus. And uh, this is the problem that we're having. Right here in Pier Park this week for Hell Week, they had a shut down Pier Park twice. What happened? Well, uh, a large group of kids amassed as they normally do. I mean, they're just out there socializing. They're having a good time. Uh, things go a little too far. They start dancing. They start dancing on tables. They get a little rowdy and it becomes a situation that's hard for the police to control. So at that point, the police shut it down. What happened here it caused some hysteria. I don't understand why, you know, when my generation went to the beach, we went to Club La Vila uh, and partied our butts off. But uh, folks here like to do it publicly and, and then scream as loud as they can shots fired shots fired so everybody starts rushing out of the place and then that causes other people to rush out of the place because everybody's worried that there's a shooter and it causes mass hysteria another place spring breakers like to congregate besides here in pier park is down the street over here uh, on the east in at pineapple willies in lake town wharf traditionally this has always been a hot spot pineapple willies is the place to go on the beach and they did have to make quite an issue out of it this year saying hey if you're under 18 you don't have a parent you're not allowed out here. They're also cracking down really hard on underage drinking, especially during the month of March uh, and any time actually throughout the year. If you're an underage drinker on the beach, we expect to get that ticket. But during the month of March, something you must know, there is no alcohol allowed in Bay County beaches. If you're on the sand, they will give you a $500 ticket. They don't care if you're 45 and you own your own business. They don't care if you're 80 and retired. They don't care if you're 21 or 18 with a cold beer. You're going to get a ticket. So just be aware during the month of March, 
March, don't bring drinks down to Bay Cow. Spring break traffic during Hell Week was absolutely terrible. It took me literally an hour to get from the east side of Panama City Beach to the west end. So Panama City Beach to Panama City Beach was one hour of traffic. Does that happen all throughout spring break? Absolutely not. I took some video, let's check it out from Hell Week. All right, stuck in spring break traffic again. And just so you know, this is a great app to have, the Waze app, because it will tell you exactly what's going on uh, in your area. So obviously there was some sort of accident up here. Uh, there's police, so Panama City Beach. If you look over here on the right front beach road, completely red up there until there, it would turn yellow. Uh, and then we have traffic all the way through this sucker. All right, after a 30 minute journey, we officially made it to Seaside. And uh, here is the madness that is. Atlanta, spring break, freaking Seaside. It's double red flag day today, so everybody's gotta stay out of the water. Uh, and this is why we have so much traffic. You'll see a lot more traffic on 98 on red flag day, and 30A is pretty much immovable. But uh, you'll see all the bikes lined up over here. People rolling around in golf carts. Looks like the food truck lines are going about 40 people deep, maybe 30 people deep there. And there's so many people here right now that literally my phone doesn't even have service. It's just a mass of people. Oh, that was smart. All right, there you go, Darwin Award winner. So this is the scene at Seacrest. As you can see, lots of bikes out, lots of golf carts. Lots of bikers. Lots of traffic. All right, roll it into Rosemary. Uh, as you can see, there's a sign over there that says 18 and under. Must be with a the parent. They've been very strict on that here. Another huge pro about living on the Emerald Coast is there's always a place to go. There's no shortage of cool places, food, restaurants, bars, just cool places. In fact, it's uh, kind of difficult because you always feel like you're on vacation. And sometimes just to sit at home and, you know, eat potato soup and a grilled cheese sandwich, which I did last night, I'm rather proud of myself. It seems kind of lame because you know so much is going on. This place behind me is called the Big Chill and it is a really cool place to visit over here at Prominence. Uh, this is the area of 38 just west of Alice Beach and Rosemary Beach and right before you get to Seaside. Really cool place. Let's go check it out. During football season, this place is an absolute lit place to go. Uh, so much fun down here. You get all the SEC fans from everywhere. This weekend, we got the Masters going on. So everybody hanging out here on a beautiful April afternoon, watching the Masters. As you can see, they have all these different restaurants that you can check out. And if you slide to the back over here, back behind the Big Chill, you have tons and tons of shopping. You gotta have a bike while you're down here, right? They rent these uh, electronic bikes. You can have an electronic bike or you can just go on a regular old pusher, even bikes for the kiddos. As you can tell, always something to do. Definite bonus of living here is all the activities, restaurants and bars you can check out. Now let's get to the next con. All right, another con about living here, and I know this is gonna sound extremely bad with this view behind me, but it does get cold here. Look, you're finding, making me find things to get upset about. The water does get a little chilly here. Starting about mid-November, you don't really wanna get in. I noticed the kids are like, eh, I'm good. Every time we went to the beach, it's still warm uh, in late November, but the water starts getting a little bit chilly then and it, the water really doesn't warm up until uh, mid-April, end of April. So right now, uh, we're at the beginning of April. Water temperature is still sitting, sitting about 67 degrees. So uh, it is a little bit chilly. Even on a beautiful day, that water is a little bit cold. Also, if you're looking to move uh, into a shared pool area, make sure the pool is heated because the girls can get in right now. They'll get into our pool, but they'll only stay in there for about 10, 20 minutes tops. So they started in early March jumping in the pool but it's still too cold for them. When they get out, the little lips turn blue. It's pretty sad. I wish our HOA provided a, a warmer pool or at least a hot tub uh, in our shared pool community. This is our cold ass pool. <laughs> Come on guys, let's do a little heated pool action here. Come on, please. But yeah, we're arguing over semantics here, okay? You're still living in paradise. You get this every day. You could take walks on the beach, perfect weather. The sound of freedom. That's right, you will get 
The awesome sound of freedom from time to time. That is uh, our United States Armed Forces doing a flyby. Uh, as we have Air Force bases all around us, I guess that could also be kind of uh, a negative if you wanted to say. It's also protecting your freedom, so, you know, there's that. Uh, we are located right between Tyndall Air Force Base and Eglin Air Force Base, which is right down the road here. So uh, you go even further west over here, you get to Pensacola, and of course, that's where the Blue Angels are from. So you get a lot of cool flybys. Actually, I'm not even gonna count that as a negative because it's so freaking cool. Now, an obvious pro about moving to the Emerald Coast is, well, you live in paradise. We're talking 320 days of sunshine a year. That is a lot of sunshine and for the most part this is a very mild climate right now it's april about 72 degrees absolutely beautiful day and this is very typical for this uh, time period the normal highs during the winter are the upper 50s so you really don't have to worry about it being too cold or too hot now don't get me wrong it does get hot during the summer but not like uh southern florida it is uh relatively mild here and beautiful you have all these natural resources to explore including the park where i'm at right now this is camp helen state park and this is one of the more beautiful parks in the area and right down the street from inlet beach in between 30a and west panama city beach you pay four dollars to get in and it's on the honor system and you have all of this beauty around you it's just absolutely beautiful rocking chairs overlooking lake powell back behind me and uh, it's got a fishing dock back there for the kids you can catch fish like that the girls love coming out here walking trails right onto the beach and the uh and the beginnings of phillips inlet and it is so beautiful walking through this park uh, on the way to Phillips Inlet. The sea meets the lake at this point. You can go and play in the water. Sometimes it's, you know, completely dry. You can walk right across. Sometimes it's chest level. You'll have to swim, uh, but really cool place to be. Very isolated. They don't have a lot of people out here. A true hidden gem here in the 30A area. In addition to this state park and the East Panama City Beach, you have St. Andrew State Park, which is also a much bigger and beautiful park. I like this one personally. This is one of my favorites. Uh, a little hidden gym for you today. You will be living in paradise if you move to the Emerald Coast. Camp Helen is such a great natural resource and this dock is so cool because you could go fishing out here. All you have to have is a fishing license. I take the girls out here all the time. You drop your pole in the water with a little bit of shrimp and boy, these little fish attack. Now you gotta use the small little hooks because these are small little fish that you catch mostly out here, uh, but a great place to bring family uh, or just hang out for the afternoon catching little bitty fish. A lot of fun out here at Camp Helen State Park. And if you look over here, they also have kayak rentals available. Now, it's uh, a little windy today, double red flags, so they don't have the kayaks uh, available to rent, but you can do paddle boards, uh, one hour, 20 bucks, two hours, 35, half day, 50. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, it's a little exhausting doing this. <laughs> You might want to start off with one hour and see how you feel. Very cool. So Margaret Hicks purchased this property in the early 1930s and built the lodge in 1932. She intended to be a private home, but the Great Depression caused her to do otherwise. And basically they opened up this to a lot of textile companies that were near the area and they would come over here in vacation. Kind of like Airbnb before Airbnb. I believe it was in the 50s. She went ahead and sold it to the state of Florida. It's now a state park. And not only does it have that cottage, or that big house, but it has all these other cottages up and down here. So Margaret, back in the 1930s, built these multicolored rainbow cottages to help supply income to her family. And here's gonna be your access to the beach over here at Camp Hill State Park. Let's take a walk. As you can see, they have a walking mat down here, which is absolutely incredible. So folks with handicaps or people that are uh, resigned to a wheelchair can have access. This is important to me. And my sister Brandy had muscular dystrophy. So I remember as a kid how hard it was to find places like this. And really nice to see people catering to the disabled. A little out of breath. But wow, what a journey that was. To be on this specific area of the beach where Lake Powell meets the Gulf of Mexico. Today's double red flags, so very powerful water running through. Check it out. If you look deep on the horizon there, that is Panama City Beach. 
This is where the ocean meets the lake. Absolutely an amazing feeling. You really feel like this was here before us, you know, that this is, this is the way God intended things to be. And when you get out here, you really start to feel how small you are as a person and how beautiful Mother Nature is. Best part about it, living in the Emerald Coast, this is $4 and a short ride away. All right, so now we're on the nature trail here at Camp Helen State Park. This is so cool, man. Check it out. Lots of bird watching back here. When you walk through this, you'll see a lot of people walking around with binoculars. The birds are so prevalent here. And this is a wonderful little trail off of Camp Helen State Park. It's about a quarter mile in distance, so not too far. You can actually veer off to the left up here and go all around if you want. Oh, not that road, that's a service road, but so cute, look at this. There's an elf lodge. It's an elf lodge, how cute. Girls absolutely love it when we take them out back here. They feel like they're on some great adventure. And really truthfully, when you think about it, it is a great adventure. This is only five minutes from our house, so this is a real treat. And here's the walking trail. This is some of the wildlife that you may see out here. Stay away from the rattlesnakes if you can. Remember, if you like what you're seeing, hit that like and subscribe button. Also, if you're looking to relocate to the area, we'd love to talk to you. My number is 901-230-0865, or you can reach me at john at rubyredmedia.com. Let's get to the next con of living on the Emerald Coast. Okay, another con about living here, and you're not gonna get away from this, folks, is the price of insurance. Not only your home insurance, but also your insurance for your vehicles. Florida's a no-fault state, and man, do you see the repercussions of that on your auto insurance. I have one vehicle, uh, my very sexy 2012 Prius uh, that I have that is actually $200 a month, which the car payment's 319. It's kind of hard to figure out how you get $200 a month uh, for insurance, but it is what it is. Uh, for three cars for the year, we're paying about $7,800 a year in insurance, which, uh, you know, really makes you want to not finance vehicles. <laughs> Maybe just buy them outright. Also, depending on your roof is going to be the price of your home insurance. Now, if you have an updated roof, you're gonna get a much better insurance quote. Our home insurance here, it, we're about eight tenths of a mile from the beach, maybe a mile from the beach. Uh, we're looking at about what we were paying in Memphis for a similar house. So it's not that bad, but we just had a new roof put on with the new attachments and everything that apparently really helps with that. If we weren't going to have that new roof installed before we moved, here we were going to be paying double for our insurance for our property insurance so you have to be very careful and this is why you have to have a realtor here because they're going to be able to tell you if you're in a flood zone what kind of flood zone and some houses here are simply uninsurable unfortunately i had a client that really loved a house right down the beach here it was about two blocks from the beach but it was on wooden stilts and no company no insurance company here would touch it the guy would have had to self-insure it and it wound up getting to the point to where he couldn't purchase the house so keep that in mind. Insurance is hard here. It's much harder to get insurance. It's going to be much more expensive. You need uh, somebody on your side that can help you through that. Me and my team would love to help you. You can reach out to me directly at john at rubyredmedia.com or give me a call at 901-230-0865. We love helping people move to the prettiest beach in America. Another huge pro about living here is the shopping, man. The shopping is absolutely off the chain here. Any major store that you can think of in your area, chances are we probably have it here on the Emerald Coast. Right now, I'm in Pier Park right behind me. We have Burlington, we have Michaels, we have Ulta, all the way down the line. All the stores you would find anywhere in the U.S., you can find it here. The anchor stores in Pier Park over here include Dillard's, J.C. Penney, Marshalls, Target, and uh, you know anything that you want, you can find except for. And this is going to break my, your heart. It broke my heart when I moved here. There's no Costco. Please, for the love of chickens, can we get a Costco here? No, but Pier Park is a huge shopping area. Anything you want uh, over here in Panama City Beach can be attained. If you go further down the road here east, you'll run into Panama City. Panama City has a traditional mall. It's got your Best Buy. It's got uh, everything that you could possibly need, big box store wise. You have it down there as well. And then we have Silver Sands Mall on the other side, and that's just a big outlet mall. Absolutely incredible.
incredible place to shop. Some of the stores they have there is the Adidas Outlet Store, American Eagle Outfitter, Asics, Banana Republic Factory Store, Calvin Klein, Columbia Factory Store. I got some sick Columbia gear there. Another one of my favorite stores there is North Face. Great outlet mall down there at Silver Sands. So uh, lots of shopping here. Don't be afraid. You're not going to have to go out of town to find your favorite store unless, of course, it's Costco. Ooh. I know the cons to living in this area are the entitled bicyclists and entitled golf cart users. Now, I'm in Rosemary Beach today and it looks great right now. This is the 1st of April. Last week, it was absolutely crazy here. In fact, I, I came drove through here. The bicyclists were literally trying to run my car off the road. The kids went a little crazy and people on bicycles here don't really seem to grasp the concept that your car is bigger than their bicycle. But, you know, you, of course, like a good person, you go ahead and let them have the right of way there. Same problem with golf carts here. Uh, you know, people get on these golf carts and they think they're invincible on them. Once again, golf cart versus car, it's not a good thing. Entitled bicyclists and entitled golf cart drivers will drive you absolutely crazy when you move here. The good news is it's only for spring break, maybe one week in spring break, and we're talking June and July, the busiest vacation months here. Other than that, you can completely get around them. It's not really a problem. Here in Rosemary Beach, the bike problem during hell week, it's insane. Okay. Hey, I hope you like what we're doing with this channel if you do don't hesitate to give us a like and subscribe if you'd like to add any comments do that below ready for another pro this one's a big one and especially you have children like we do we have a four-year-old and a five-year-old ruby and poppy it was very important for us when we got away from memphis to get to some place with better schools and as we did research we found out a lot of the schools here on the emerald coast are very highly ranked including the school right behind me this is dune lakes elementary this is part of the walton county school district and i tell you what it's an a plus rated school. We just had kindergarten orientation not too long ago. Ruby absolutely loved it. The teachers were absolutely incredible and the facility is absolutely immaculate. Most of the schools here in South Walton are going to be A plus schools. I haven't seen anything in uh, South Walton that is not A plus. If you go further down towards Destin, you're looking at mostly A minus. Panama City Beach, you're going to find schools that are B pluses pretty much all throughout Panama City Beach. Going into uh, Lynn Haven and into the Panama City area, you'll find a bunch of schools that are rated B plus or Bs at the lowest. So the schools here, absolutely incredible. I highly recommend if you have school age children to check out this area if you're looking to make a move. Okay, another con to move into the Emerald Coast. It's something you're gonna have to deal with and that is the risk of hurricanes. The risk of hurricane, very real here. Back in 2018, Hurricane Michael came through Panama City and absolutely destroyed the city. Now, what's interesting is everything west of West Panama City City Beach pretty much left untouched. West Panama City Beach, in fact, only had uh, a loss of power, whereas folks over here in 30A only had flickers on and off of power. So hurricanes are terrible. They're terrible for a lot of reasons. They're terrible for your insurance. They're terrible because it obviously wrecks your property. But this area is always on high alert when it becomes hurricane season. The good news about a hurricane is you have plenty of time to get out of its way if one's coming towards you. On average, we'll have one major storm system come through here. Now, that's not necessarily hurricane. It could be a depression. It could be, uh, you know, just a really big storm that rolls through. But every now and then, uh, you will get one of these bigger hurricanes that come up through this area. And it can be devastating for the area. Right now, this is not a hurricane. Uh, this is just double red flag weather. We're getting a lot of wind. You also get a lot of wind uh, off the coast, and you'll get some pretty big storms as they come through. We had one come through last night, and uh, boy, I tell you what, the thunderstorms down here don't mess around, but they're not hurricanes. Definitely something to be aware of. Hurricane threat does exist down here however you have plenty of time to get away from those hurricanes and if you decide to ride it out which i do not recommend anything over a category three make sure you have a hurricane preparedness kit if the winds are over a certain speed they will shut down the overpasses to get over uh, onto the mainland so always be prepared and get ready to get out asap my family has an action plan in place you know if we do have a hurricane come through even if it's a category one i'm getting my girls uh, out of here you just have to go a little bit up the coast or you can even go east to west of the storm a lot of folks uh, with Hurricane Michael when it came through in 2018 just took off towards the west. In fact, they saw all the FEMA trucks in Pensacola and figured that was a pretty good place to stop. Pensacola, of course, not affected by that hurricane. So you don't have to necessarily travel north. You can also travel east or west to try and avoid the hurricane. The threat of hurricanes exists here. Just always be aware of what's going on with the weather. It's kind of hard to avoid when you live here. All right, let's talk pro. Another pro about living in this area is the awesome fishing. If you're an angler, you're going to love living here. In fact, Destin is probably my favorite place to fish. If you go down to Harbortown, they have all kinds of boats.
boats that leave off of there. The fishing is absolutely incredible. You could go on a wreck boat, a big party boat with a group of 100 people, pay 100 bucks a piece. They take you out all day. You could take up to 11 hour trips out there and get out in the Gulf here and catch some really big fish, especially during red snapper season. It's so much fun to go on these boats. Uh, you have a limit, I believe, of two per day. Uh, but man, so much fun. Destin, in my opinion, probably the best place to fish on the Emerald Coast. Coming in second is over here at Panama City Beach. In fact, we have the pier right here behind me and it's amazing the amount of fish you can pull out of this pier. It's only seven bucks and this restaurant right over here, Hooked, it's got a 24 hour bait shop attached to it. You can go in there and talk to the folks at Hook Bait and Tackle and they'll get you hooked up on whatever is biting at the pier on the day of the week that you're there. It does change. It really depends on the time of the year of what fish is gonna be underneath the pier. Uh, so far this year, we were out there one day fishing with them. We caught 13 Team Florida Pompano and the three hours we were out there. So if you love great fish, uh, this is a great place to fish here at the pier in Panama City Beach. Not only do they have Florida Pompano in abundance, uh, also keep Spanish mackerel this time of season. Uh, people even catch swordfish uh, off of this pier. So uh, lots of redfish out there too. Seven bucks is all it costs to go pier fishing. I myself, I do a lot of surf fishing too. So yeah, you could just take your rod anywhere on 30A, throw your rod. There are plenty of places and bait shops that you can rent poles from the day if you want to do that or bring your own pole stick your pole in the sand and have a good time fishing now i will tell you with this kind of fishing it's a little more specialized i've been here fishing probably eight months now i caught one fish surf fishing in fact i'm sure it's operator error but fishing is so much fun here one tip i'll give you if you do go out on these boats and go fishing in the sea take dramamine before you go i've had too many friends of mine that go out on the boat and they run their day by not taking dramamine before they go out it's simple cure for seasickness three bucks boom you're good to go all day. Does it make you tired? Yeah, but that's fine because you usually have about an hour and a half, two hour ride out to the fish. So take the dram of me. Trust me on this. Another great place to fish is San Andrews State Park. If you go all the way east to the far east side of Panama City Beach, you'll find San Andrews State Park, a great place to chill for the day. I believe it's eight bucks to get a carload of folks in there. You can go on the jetties and fish off the jetties. There's a little area where you could actually take your family that's protected from the waves. So uh, if it is a red flag day out here, you could go out there, bring your family. They can snorkel in the water without having to worry about the big rip currents out here. Hey, I know it's taboo and you're not supposed to talk about good fishing spots, but if you have any fishing spots that you've hit up here that you'd like to share hit me up in the comments down here i definitely want to hear help your fellow anglers out and if you're looking to make a move here to panama city beach or anywhere on the emerald coast we'd love to help you my name is john my number is 901-230-0865 we get calls all the time for people just like you looking to relocate we did it we'll help you through the process all right uh, another con of living on the emerald coast is the relatively low vagrant problem there is uh some homeless that live here it's not not terribly uh, a lot. You're not going to see a lot of it walking up and down the beaches at 30A at all. Uh, if you're over here on the west side of Panama City Beach, this is where most of the vagrant activity takes place and it's pretty minimal. It seems to be most prevalent in this section right here. So we just got off the bridge from 30A into West Panama City Beach where the Publix is over here on Front Beach Road. And uh, you'll see some homeless folks that uh, usually hang around this area. Uh, there is a lot from what I've heard from other people, uh, drug use uh, that goes on in this area. So a lot of them will congregate back over here behind the Publix and up and down this stretch of Panama City Beach Parkway or 98 or Old Back Beach Road, you will see uh, some homeless folks uh, walking up and down this area. Uh, I've been told from a lot of folks that they live in the woods uh, back over here on the other side of 98. Every now and then you'll go to a gas station uh, here and you'll see, you know, some homeless on the side of the, the gas station. It's sad, you know, uh, it's nowhere near as prevalent as other places that I've lived. We were actually at that gas station one day and there was a homeless person uh, outside and was really sad. I gave her a couple bucks and the gas station attendant kicked her out. I had to explain to my girls what was going on. It's pretty terrible, but yeah, it's just this little stretch of road right here. So from Front Beach Road, 
uh, all the way to 78, you will see some homeless folks uh, hanging out in this area. Not overwhelming, obviously. We're driving here right now, and I haven't seen one. So, I mean, every now you'll see one, uh, you know, walking up and down the sidewalks here with a car. Not a big deal. They seem relatively, uh, you know, harmless. I haven't had not one person ask me for money here, but you know, it's not a big problem. We're talking about cons. I'm, I'm trying to come up with cons for you guys. I, I have seen homeless folks over here before. Not a lot of them, but it exists. Okay, now another pro to living here is, and I'm not saying this to be sexist, but there are pretty people everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's people running and jogging. They're all in shape. And well, for me at least, it's helped me get a little bit more in shape. Uh, being in the Midwest for 12 years really took its toll on me. And since moving here, I've dropped 20 pounds just because well, everybody else looks good. I want to look good too, right? That's a beautiful part about living down here. Beautiful people. Speaking of beautiful people in beautiful places, we are at Fonville Press right now, right behind me. And this is a spot where everyone in 38 likes to meet up. Alice Beach, very cool place. It's a very Instagram worthy spot. Let's check out Fonville Press. Very cool place. Ooh, very cool place and full of very pretty people. I'm just stating the facts here, folks. Hey, if you're contemplating a move to the Emerald Coast, we'd love to hear from you. My name is John Arroyo. My number is 901-230-0865. I'm a relocation specialist uh, here on the Emerald Coast. We have hundreds of people reach out to us all the time looking to move, and we love talking to you about real estate. So please call me or email me, john at rubyredmedia.com. All right, another con to living here on the beautiful Emerald Coast is the lack of concerts or musical options. Now, I was a radio DJ for 25 years, so I really like going to concerts. Uh, there just isn't a lot of national acts you'll see come through here. Now my wife would be very mad at me if I said this because she's so excited about the Gulf Coast Jam that's coming up. And Gulf Coast Jam is featuring Morgan Wallen, Cody Johnson, Jelly Roll, and more. Uh, it's a, basically a four-day festival out here at Frank Brown Park, but that's it. I mean, there's not a lot of big concerts that come through our area. And that concert's been sold out for quite some time. So if you're here looking for some really big national concerts, it's not the spot for you. However, we do have some great local artists that play all the time in different locations. And you can see those artists all up and down the coast. All right, let's get to the other pro of living here. And that is, this place is a safe place to live. I've never felt safer in my life. My wife and I originally lived in Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's where I did radio for 12 years before moving here. I was a radio DJ. Hey, everybody. But we moved from there to Memphis to start my business. And when we did, the business was super successful. But the crime rate was so high in Memphis that it was absolutely so scary living there. Then my wife refused to live there anymore. Uh, the city really just fell apart onto itself. One of the last straws for us was our car getting stolen out of our driveway. Uh, the wife had had enough. She said, you know what? Me and the girls, we're out. Uh, we're going someplace that's safe, that we want to live. We hope to see you there. So uh, what did I do? Got out. <laughs> And now we're here and it was a great move for us. It was a great move for our family because as I said, this is one of the safest places you'll live. The police presence here is absolutely insane. The police do not mess around. My friends, I'm telling you what, I've gotten pulled over twice for speeding on 98, which by the way, let me let you know this, there are speed checks all up and down 98. So you're gonna be very careful to pay attention to the signs when you're going through 98. The two times I got pulled over, cops, asked me for my license, my registration, asked me where I was doing, saw my kids in the car, said, sir, have a great night. Please keep your speed down. Now, if you're somebody here causing trouble, that is gonna go completely different for you. Uh, if they don't like what you're doing, the vibe you're presenting, they will pull you over. Just for instance, we had these squat trucks that came in this past spring break and the kids didn't seem that bad. They really didn't, but they were driving illegal cars and the fact that they couldn't see over the top hoods of their cars. Did the cars look stupid? Yes, of course they do. The cops weren't having it and the cops shut it down. Uh, basically, people were kicking them out of their Airbnbs. It was a big deal. And uh, wrote all of these guys in these squatted trucks tickets because they did not want that look here. Be aware, if they don't like what you're doing, they will get your butt out of town. They have a saying here, come on vacation, leave on probation. It's not a joke. They're very serious about keeping the families of this area safe. And they want this as a family destination, not a high crime destination. So be aware, criminals, if you're looking to have a good time and party, this area is not for you. All right, guys, we're here. We're at the final con. This is the final boss of them all. And the biggest con about moving to our area is the mess that's going on right now with the public and private beaches in Walton County. 
Lightning. I have a whole video dedicated to this. In fact, it got uh, over 65,000 views its first month. I'm sure it's still probably going crazy. Lots of folks very interested on what the situation is right now. And I go in depth on this particular subject. You can check that video out right here. And uh, it will tell you all of the intricacies about the public versus private beaches. It is a problem here, but you know, it's something that we can get through together. If you're looking to make the move to our area, don't hesitate to reach out to me, 901-230-0865. That's my phone number. Or you can reach me at john at rubyredmedia.com. We look forward to hearing from you soon.